Welcome to Young Asia Television. This series is dedicated to all the young people in the world who are working with their communities to make a difference. Today we meet Faustina, a human rights activist from Bangladesh. We don't try anymore to convince people why we are activists, why it is human rights that gets uh, that spurs us on to various issues. Um, it's, I think, a lost battle trying to um, convince people that it is commitment that motivates us on. Home to the impoverished, illiterate and desperate. The Bastis of Bangladesh have become part of government attempts to rid the city of violence, drugs and prostitution. Vices that are believed to thrive in environments like these. The unwanted objects approved for removal, over a thousand people and their makeshift homes and lives. What shall I say now? I have nothing at all, nobody to look after me. I have no food, no clothing, nothing. They came and they said, you cannot stay here. We are not going to let you live here. We are going to slam your houses. The unjust eviction of slum dwellers and the forced reclaiming of state-owned lands are a short-term solution to a social problem that Bangladesh has long chosen to ignore. I have been part of the public interest litigation movement and within this movement one of the high points I would say of our advocacy strategies has been in the area of unlawful and illegal eviction of slum dwellers by the government. So you can see that um, through our movements and through our law reform strategies and our advocacy and our um, lobbying with the, the policy makers and proper, um, proper steps being taken within the, the legal movement and using our legal strategies, we've been able to get a, a, obtain a very, very fundamental and landmark judgment. Uh, through which now it has been held that no person can be evicted illegally or rather cannot be evicted without certain safeguards coming into place. At present, Dhaka has over three million slum dwellers who have come to the city in search of jobs and homes. Yet the government has little support to offer these rural landless people. What is also overlooked is that the slum dwellers make up a significant part of the workforce as rickshaw drivers, sewer cleaners, street and door-to-door -door vendors. Instead, the land areas occupied by slums are being sold to private developers in the city. It was to challenge such injustices that Faustina rallied the support of her legal aid organization, the Aino Sailesh Kendro and other senior High Court lawyers to bring about a monumental change to the way the government of Bangladesh treated its urban poor. A step in the right direction, but nevertheless only part of a solution to the problem faced by the Basti dwellers. In Bangladesh, an estimated 26% of the women are illiterate, as opposed to 49% literate males in a population of 130 million. 
Female intellectuals are few and far between, but a strong influence on Faustina's life has been a very public figure in Bangladeshi legal circles. Salma Soban is Bangladesh's first woman barrister, and she's also executive director of the Aino Sailesh Kendro. She has seen Faustina progress from an ambitious law student to a responsible and dedicated legal counsellor. We met Faustina as part of the law review group, which you may know is a, started in the university, a group of young law students got together to um, learn about the realities of the situation, not just what was in their books. And they did some very useful work on things like um, med medical negligence, and Faustina was part of that group. Enlisting the aid of voluntary workers, Salma and the Aino Sailesh Kendro have been able to build up a legal aid base to assist women who have been wronged by society. It is an issue that is closest to Salma's heart. At the end of the day, we don't just want to advocate and try to access the rights for people, but we also want those people to become motivated towards wanting uh, a just society not just justice for themselves, we all want justice for ourselves. Uh, we all want to win, even if it might be injustice for somebody else. But if you can get people beyond that more selfish interest into a wider, uh, and, and bring a wider perspective into their lives, I think that that would be an additional uh, advantage of running an organization like Ayn Chalishka. It is when I came on to university that it was almost like a, 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 a mental explosion of issues, of ideas, of so many isms and ideologies because it, it forced one to think in a particular way, to sharpen one's awareness in a particular way, to be more sensitized to human rights issues, to uh, understanding women's rights as human rights and the two being integral to trying to understand how policies are made to trying to understand how one critiques policies how one critiques the government or political machinery how one is able to fit one's own political scenario from a universal or world perspective. So all of this I'm very grateful for, for being thrown into that particular uh, time of our history and coming to the university that I did. Dhaka University, as many people know, used to be known as the Oxford of the East. It was established way back in 1921. And even as early as 1921, Dhaka University was a co-ed institution. So this is quite remarkable as far as the, the suffrage movement and the women's movement in Bangladesh goes. It is true that the educational standard has deteriorated somewhat, but the environment is nevertheless similar to what it used to be, even in 1971. And as we have mentioned before, 1971 is quite a hallmark year for Bangladesh because it signifies the year of our liberation war and also the beginning of Bangladesh in our own unique uh, identity. The Dhaka University is remarkable also because it is the center point of political sensitization. It is also the focal point and the, what should I say, the uh, watershed of various movements in our political history, starting with various students' movements and the 1971 war. The students of Dhaka University, as well as the other universities of the country, have played a very, very crucial role in the political makeup of this country. So I am very proud to be part of this institution. And although there are various problems, political, economic, and academic session jams, but still, Dhaka University has signified something very special for our ethos. The youth of Bangladesh, like others in Asia, have played a pivotal role in moulding the political state of their country.
I'm very much interested in art and the art galleries. I'm interested in classical music. And uh, one of my favorite pastimes is reading. So um, for that, I don't need to go outdoors too much. So uh, most of my personal and social life is made up of being with friends, uh, discussing theater. We have a very vibrant uh, theater movement in Bangladesh which is quite well appreciated within the subcontinent. So um, I, I try to involve myself in theatre discussions as much as possible. And uh, that makes up a big part of my social life. As much as Faustina enjoys spending her time watching the theatre productions that take place in Dhaka, she is here today to give the cast a unique insight into some of the issues that they reenact in their dramas. This youthful theatre performance is dealing with the representation of a serious issue of human rights violations, something that Faustina is all too familiar with. Theatre is an entertaining media through which we can raise social awareness to motivate people on issues like superstitions, prejudice and fundamentalism. Of course it has an impact on the society, otherwise people's values on good and bad would have disappeared. I feel drama has a strong influence. Sulaiman is one of the more famous stage writers and directors in Bangladesh. Also a former student of Dhaka University, he has been writing plays since he was very young. Today he is responsible for producing over 30 stage dramas, mostly focusing on themes like human rights, women's issues and social discrimination. Hoping like many Bangladeshi writers to make a difference through his specialized medium. Unfortunately, all the world is a stage for the most inhuman of crimes committed against our own kind. But using the performing arts to raise awareness will perhaps help people all over the world to realize the importance of making a difference within their own communities if they are to improve the state of human rights in the world. Thank you.